All right, so the next fly I'm gonna tie for you guys is a fly, the third fly in a series of bluegill bugs that I've uh, decided to tie. Flies that I've been fishing with and have had pretty good success with. Now this fly I call the bluegill magic bug. And for various reasons I call it that. For one very obvious reason, or obvious to me, and an uh, easy way why I came up with that name is because I used the magic tool to make the body of this fly. Now, uh, contrary to the other flies that I've tied in this series of bluegill bugs, is uh, in this fly the difference between the other two is that the other two are very simple flies. This one is more on the complex side. Now, uh, one of the reasons is that I use the magic tool for naming it the magic bug. Another reason is that um, I was fishing this fly in a shadowed cove where there I was surrounded by trees. The fly was out to about 20 to 30 feet out in front of me in the shade, about two feet underwater. And all of a sudden, the ice dub that is in this fly caught the light and sent shimmers all the way back to me. Within a second, I saw a black shadow rush out and just take this fly. And I said, all right, it works. And so this is a fly of my own design that I have just, just messing around with the magic tool, ended up making uh, this fly. Now, uh, this fly is complex in that also not just the tool used, um, but also in the uh, materials. Now, I hate to watch a video of a fly uh, tying tutorial, and all of a sudden they come up with these crazy exotic materials that, you know, I've, I've spent so much money on materials, and all of a sudden here comes this nice looking fly, and the materials are like, whoa, it's something else I got to go out and buy. That uh, kind of turns me off. This is kind of one of those flies. But anyways, let's go ahead and do the tying. And so, in my vise, I have a size 12 Allen fly fish hook, number S402 in a size 12. On the hook, I have a tungsten nickel black 2.8 bead also by Allen fly fish hook. And, and let me put in a plug for Allen fly fish, uh, Allen fly fishing. They are amazing, amazing. Uh, their pricing is bar none better than anyone else. I haven't seen anyone that can beat them. And so um, check them out, allenflyfishing.com. Their hooks, their beats, their tungsten beats are the best prices. I mean, compared to Cabela's, compared to all these other places, they're amazing. And so uh, on with the tying. So in my bobbin, I have a, a black 70 denier uh, by Danville and so we're going to start our thread right behind the bead and so please excuse the lighting I've been fighting with the lighting and I've been fighting with the quality of the video I do not have a high definition camera that can record uh, off my desktop and so we got to do what we got to do all right for the detail I have white strung marabou very stringy the ends and so I want to go ahead a nice stringy puff like that. Okay, I want to measure it about a shank length. Everything's always a shank length. Pinch wrap, another pinch wrap, hold it. Now what I like to do is as I tighten down, I like to twist and wiggle that, that way it makes its way around the shank. Secure that with a few wraps, grab my scissors, cut away the excess. And tie that down a bit. Now here we're going to use a dubbing loop. Get my dubbing loop twister. And 
And now I'm going to make a dubbing loop that's probably just to give me enough room. Four inches, five inches. You don't, I'm not going to use all that, but just so that you have room to spin. Okay. Now we're going to take our bobbin. We're going to take our dubbing loop. Let me hang it up over here. I do want to take and throw a half hitch. Not so that my thread doesn't become unraveled and hang my bobbin on my bobbin rest. And now for the fun part, using the magic tool. Now I'm going to have to reposition the camera and we'll come back to that. Okay, now, here comes the uh, hard part about this. Now, I spent the 40 bucks to buy this set. It's called the Magic Tool. It is wonderful. It gives you the ability to work multiple materials all at once. And so, I just have to say this. You don't have to buy this tool to do this uh, application for a dubbing loop. Um, there are, I'm not going to do it, but there is a, 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 a video already out there. Uh, Jim Mazira, you look up his fly tying uh, tutorials, he actually has a video on how he makes a tool similar to the magic tool that you can make out of foam, sticky back foam. You make a block and it works uh, similar to this process. I went ahead, ahead and bit the bullet and bought the tool and it is wonderful. Now, uh, I said in this fly we're gonna be using what we would call or what I would call a uh, exotic material and that is uh, because I'm not sure how often or how readily available you can get uh, beaver, a beaver mask or black beaver mask. Now, I acquired a black beaver mask at an uh, outdoor expo at a fur trade salesman, and he had, um, it's a good place to go to get materials. He had this black beaver mask. He had a bunch of different masks, and they were selling for $1.50 to $3. Um, he, just just a, a bin of scraps. Well, that bin of scraps to anyone else would have been garbage or useless, but to a fly tire, that was like, an amazing find and so we're gonna go ahead and and use that now I'm gonna go ahead and cut cut a bit of this beaver mask here let me find the spot that I've been cutting from and we wanna clear out all the fuzzy stuff trash can want to thin it out and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and lay this and spread it out here in the table of the magic tool Now I've tied these in various various forms. Now I've tied these in a very sparse. For example, here's a fly that is very sparse. We'll, we'll go get back to that because it's not showing well. And I've also tied them very thin. I want to tie this one as sparse as I can. I've also done them in variations. And we'll get to that now on this you can take and throw ice dub I don't know how well that's showing up there let me zoom into that see that I've got ice dub on top of that fur now we're going to go ahead and take a hackle feather 
and I want I don't want to use the whole thing what I'm gonna do it's gonna be because I want to make this as sparse what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip one half one half of this take all those fibers off and now I'm left with that and I'm gonna take this put all my fibers up 90 degrees and I'm going to lay it on top and I'm just gonna do that it snaps right in once it snaps you're done take your scissors clip the ends off cut. and now all your fibers are there they're all vertically up your hackle your ice stub and your black beaver mask that's that is what's going to consist of that body now you take your clip you grab all those you open the table pull it out and you see that stem right there you take that stem and you cut it all off Okay, now let's reposition the camera once more. Okay, now we got the camera repositioned and we got our dubbing loop over here. Let's put, bring our dubbing loop back into play here. We have our dubbing loop. And what I like to do is I like to wax. Yeah, the height, uh, fly tires wax, huh? chapstick works just as well okay I'm holding my dubbing loop and I got my material clip I hope that's coming in focus here okay now all you do is take that clip put that material in there close your thread around it pull your dubbing tool tight And there it's captured. Give one twist with your fingers, a slight twist with your fingers, and now you can adjust that. Uh oh, I think I just messed that up. Now we brought it back. Okay, now hold that. Take your dubbing twister and spin that. Spin it and let your dubbing twister spin. Spin it like that. You see that? You got a nice. Now we're going to take this. And we're going to go ahead and let me back off there. I want to get way back here. Back to the tail. And stroke all these fibers. Bring it to the front, stroking all these fibers. Okay, now kick that out of the way. Take this and capture your dubbing loop. Put some locking wraps on that. Okay, now we can reposition our camera. Okay, so we got our dubbing loop tied off. Let's get this bar out of the way. Take our scissors, cut the rest of this. Let's 
stroke all these fibers back. Take your whip finish. Do one, two, hang your whip finish there. I'm going to use a head cement or a Sally Henson's. And I'm going to apply it to the thread right here. And that thread will drive that right into there. And we're done. Okay, now this isn't the prettiest fly. And one thing I've learned that for the most part, most of these type of flies that you're going to make with a dubbing loop system like that, most of them, especially with the magic tool, most of them do not come into their own until you have really uh, oh. another reason for why I've called this the magic bug is um, I've tied these in various variations different color bead heads here you see a black nickel tungsten bead head and you see this very fluffy very sparse um, the dry hackle actually has a purpose here is a more sparse one Here is one, little sparse, but with a copper head. Now, here is another variation. It's a little on the lighter side. This is without the beaver. Now, you could use black rabbit, okay? You don't have to use beaver. Here is one with the, uh, let me try and work this light see that there's a lighter it's lighter it's without the black but this one actually has a CDC color in chartreuse and so that gives it a whole lot more movement now back to this real buggy version that we just tied and another reason why we can call it the magic bug is that this these uh, hackle, dry hackle, this kind of acts almost like a weed guard and deflects it from getting hung up on weeds. And not only that, is I found that my hookup ratio with small bluegill was very low. Only the big ones were getting hung up on it because they were being deflected. The bite was being deflected. Look at this, this this here bug right here very very full very buggy very um, thick and so it tended to deflect now this isn't the prettiest fly in your box but I want to tell you something it was very effective that is the magic bluegill bug hope you had enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching Wow.